Hi, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Shannon from Strategic Intervention Solutions. Our website is sis4teachers.org. We are gonna have some amazing fun playing a multiplication game that I love called Multiplication Tetris. Multiplication Tetris is a very easy game to play. The supplies are very limited. Each person needs their own copy of a 15 by 15 grid, a set of dice, and then I like to use colored pencils, however it's not necessary as you're going to um, play the game. The idea is very similar to the game that maybe your parents even know called Tetris, where you're trying to evenly fill as many of the squares in as possible without having, you know, with having very minimal space. The way this game works is a player is going to roll the die and they are going to build the area of their rectangle based on what they see on the dice. So we know that we could make a four by five rectangle, um, but it's going to either be a four by five or it could be a five by four. Depending on how I put this in, if I wanna count four across and then five down, or if I wanna turn it using the commutative property, you could decide which way you want. So as you roll it, you can decide which way the area box is going to go inside of your grid. You have to be careful because you can put any of your boxes wherever you want. However, as the grid starts to call full, get full, you want to make sure that you're optimizing the use of the boxes. The game will end if you roll and you are unable to put the total area or product inside of your grid, meaning you don't have enough spots. So I'm going to start off playing with mine. I have a six by one or a one by six. I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna start this row down here where I'm going to do one row of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna kind of outline my six boxes inside of mine. I'm going to put that I did a one row by six, which equals six. So I'm gonna shade in my area for my one by six. My partner is going to get to go. Ooh, we got a nice big area, six by six. So he can decide to go in any part of the grid, but he's gonna count over six rows and six columns. So kind of maybe starting at the bottom if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six to here. And then over, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll just put a dot there. Okay, my partner's gonna go ahead and fill in that area to kind of shade that in to show that he is using that whole thing. You can sometimes write the multiplication, um, you know, fact that you're using to kind of show your area if you want to. And so that you can kind of see, so you're just gonna kind of shade in your six by six. Oops, six by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna just stop here. That way and kind of show it, okay? So you can write dark six times six is 36. Okay, it's my turn to go. Now, when he goes, if he gets another six, he's maybe gonna to wanna to use the columns that are kind of next door. I ended up getting a six by four or a four by six. I would like to keep this six going. So I'm gonna count up. It might be easier for us to put dots. One, two, three, four. I already know going across that that is six. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in my area here. And I know that the total for mine is going to be 24. My partner's gonna go ahead and go. He also gets a six by four. The nice part when you're trying to fill this evenly, we'll be able to keep that length of the six. So maybe with our pen with a different color so we can kind of delineate the different pieces that we're using, we could go ahead and put in our, we already have the row going across with six, so we're gonna go up four. Put a nice dot in there so you know how far to color. Okay, and then you're gonna go all the way over. So we have one, two, three, four. And I'm meeting across, there you go. I colored that whole area in of the six by four. We have the same product as each other, six times four. Well, my friend is continuing to color. I'm going to go ahead and roll. Man, it's my lucky day. I keep getting that six and I wanna keep this full. 
really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and count up. One, two, three, four, five. Keep my area kind of full with shading in this part. My partner's gonna go ahead and go. As you get going in this game, you could have your own set of dice if you wanted to, because you can continue play while the next person is coloring theirs in. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in mine. My partner's gonna go ahead and go, and we must be lucky today with those number sixes because we can kind of keep ours um, kind of going. Okay, so my partner's decided to take a different approach and he's making his with six rows of two. And so he's gonna fill his in using a different property, but still nicely evenly filling in the rows. I have a four by three. I have to make a decision on where I'm going to go with this. One, two, three, four. It's unlikely I would get that spot. So I'm gonna go two, three, and I will fill this in here to get my area. You're gonna keep going as you fill in. Your partner can go. Okay, a four by three. Kinda gotta think about where it's gonna go. Four, ooh, that's a nice spot by three. I would really put the dots in there for students to know kind of where they're going. I'm gonna keep going and do a four by one. Hmm. I don't know how lucky I would be to get that again, but I will go ahead and extend this to make it a four by one. There's no irregular shapes allowed in this game. We're gonna continue playing till we get our boards filled. Okay, our spaces are starting to slow down. We have a section kind of here and over here left over. My partner has kind of a row of six here, which he's very lucky because he has one row of six and can fit that perfectly in. But as you look, as the game boards are filling up, it's starting to be a little bit tight in the strategic ways of where you're putting your totals are going to really depend. Ooh, I just got a six by four. I cannot do this because it's a three by three. I have a one here, another one here, and six, a two by six. So my game has now ended, and I need to figure out how many open squares I have. Remember, in this game, it's not who finishes first or who finishes last. It's who has the least amount, the lowest number of squares left. If I count my total of empty squares now that I'm locked out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. The score I read at the top is 19. I'm hoping that when my partner is done that he has less than 19. My partner is at that point of being locked out. There is no more room for him to be able to do this. So putting a dot in each of the boxes is going to help him to count the total. I'm not sure who's going to win this game because he has a very, very few boxes open, but let's count them and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, he's gonna put a 16 at the top here. I have been reigned the not the winner in this case. This game is a ton of fun, as you can see, continuing play. You don't even necessarily need to pass the dice back and forth because you can just keep going until the grid is filled. The game comes to a halt for an individual person when there's no more area to fill up. We hope that you enjoy this game. It's a free download on our website on sis4teachers.org. Share with us to let us know how, what kind of fun you've been having at home or at school playing this game. Good luck.